Hello, guys. Uh, I'm joined by our Braves insider, Grant McCauley, on what is a huge day in Major League Baseball. We've been waiting for this news all winter long. Shohei Otani, the superstar pitcher, hitter, I mean, he does everything, uh, has finally decided to sign with the team. He's headed to Los Angeles or staying in Los Angeles to be playing with the Dodgers for a 10-year, $700 million contract. And, of course, we got to bring in Grant to ask about this. And, Grant, uh, you obviously were at the winter meetings. I'm curious, what was your first reaction when you heard the news that Shohei actually broke it and that it's for $700 hundred million dollars well i'm not surprised on on the shohei otani breaking the news standpoint because that seemed to be the biggest talking point this winter is that when it came to his free agency he wanted to be able to control the narrative the information all of those things obviously he wanted to cash in for a lot of money and i've said this before i expected him to get a half a billion dollars i expected maybe 600 million dollars was in play but 700 million dollars a record contract obviously i don't think you have me on here to tell you that but i will anyway just an unbelievable sum of money and far beyond what I thought he was going to get, particularly based on the fact that, as we know, he's not even going to pitch in 2024. So while he does do everything, he's not going to be able to do it all for the Dodgers in year one. I'm curious, uh, from your point of view, why do you think the Dodgers decide to make a move like this for a guy? I mean, obviously, that $700 million is a staggering figure for a player that you said is not going to be pitching this next year. Well, think about a few aspects of Shohei Otani that make him special. The fact that he does pitch and that he is a world-class hitter, that is what everybody talks about. But from an international intrigue standpoint, a marketing standpoint, this is a guy who's going to help the Dodgers, I think, print money in some other areas where a lot of baseball contracts simply don't offer you that because you'll have an entire nation behind him. I did speak to various members of the foreign press, the Japanese media that were following this story at the winter meetings in Nashville, and that was something that was pointed out more than once is, You'll have the entire country rooting for your team, whatever team that it is. Now, Shohei obviously ended up moving from one side of L.A. to the other side of L.A. or just up the street a little bit. But uh, either way, I think that this was a, a natural fit. I think that the West Coast was kind of the place for him. But when you're the Dodgers and you think about the money that you can generate from a marketing standpoint and the fact that there are expected to be some considerable deferrals in this, I think they can pretty much not kick the can down the road with this contract, but find ways to make even a $700 million contract palatable. But I'm not sure that there were a whole lot of other clubs that could have talked themselves into this. I do want to talk more about the impact this will have on the league, but I do want to ask about just what this process was kind of like watching it happen. Obviously, like you said, you were in Nashville for the meetings. This has been uh an off season, a free agent situation that we've never really seen where we didn't hear anything. It was said that he would actually hold it against certain teams if they said anything. Of course, the Dodgers said something. They still got him. Um, when you kind of, Can you kind of contextualize what this process has kind of been like watching this kind of unfold? Yeah, I was never going to be sold on him eliminating potential contenders for his services and perhaps the best deal that he was going to get because somebody mentioned something somewhere. I mean, there is something to be said for holding it close to the vest and you know having those conversations go in a manner in which maybe it's not blow for blow out in the media, out for public consumption. I totally understand that. But I've also never seen a free agency that has gone the way that it had people trying to track private jets that may or may not have been taking Shohei Otani to Toronto, where he was reported to possibly be signing with the Blue Jays, except that he wasn't, and nobody was convinced that he was. And less than 24 hours later, he's signing with the Los Angeles Dodgers, not leaving the state of California. So I don't know if we have enough time to contextualize how bizarre, how intriguing, and how just overall what a story this was for Shohei Otani. Uh, and, and his free agent signing and the saga that it was over the course of the first half of the winter. But I'm hopeful that this will allow for a lot of other moves that maybe weren't being made because people were waiting to see where this domino would fall can now start being made. And we can find some players, some homes before we get to spring training here in a couple of months. I want to ask how this kind of impacts the Braves. Um, and I, this is something that many people talk about for a long time, whether or not Shohei would trying to be part of the Braves organization. Was that ever something that was actually on the table that uh, was a potential thing? Now, I never got any indication from anyone I talked to that the Braves were going to be able to get into the bidding war, the derby that was going to be for Shohei Otani, that again, to go back to what we've already talked about, was expected to fetch him at least half a billion dollars. I mean, if there is a contract out like that out there for the Atlanta Braves to consider, and I'm not saying it'll be half a billion, but they got a few stars in the next four, five, six years that they might like to keep around in Atlanta for a long time. So I never saw the Braves being in position to hand out a 10-year, $500 million or more contract this way. That just did not seem to be a play that they were making based on everything else that they have done to set this this team up uh, to be a consistent winner with a lot of continuity in the way that they spend their money. Just seemed to be above and beyond what a team like the Braves was looking to do. And they have quite a few other things that they could accomplish with that money or even a fraction of that money because, again, it's a record-breaking contract for Otani.
obviously it makes a big deal for the Dodgers. Um, Shohei Otani moves into the NL. Uh, they have a series that they'll be playing in LA at one point. I think they come out here as well for a four game set as well. Um, what kind of addition do you think he is for that team and for a team that goes, seems to go up against the Braves pretty often in the postseason? How do you think that kind of impacts things in the NL going forward? I mean, tremendous hitter, and obviously when he's healthy, he's a tremendous pitcher. So there's a lot of reasons why the Dodgers, I mean, 700 million reasons why they wanted to be part of their club. But there is some question, I think, around it. It's fair to ask, you know, what is his future going to be like on the mound? Can he come back from an elbow injury? Sure, lots of pitchers, including him, have done that. But will he be the same effective guy? And when you look at, what, four, five, six years down the road, because, again, it's a 10-year contract, Will he still be pitching? Will he be a reliever by that point? I mean, what is all of that going to look like? That, I think, is something that clubs that were really serious about Shohei Otani and were, and I mean, half a billion dollars or more serious, we're going to have to ask themselves before signing on the dotted line or offering that contract out to Otani. But as far as the National League is concerned, we know the Dodgers were going to spend money. They were going to be in it. They are perennially in the postseason picture. Uh, but what it does to the Braves, I don't think much, to be honest with you. It puts another talented hitter in Los Angeles, but uh, as far as what Shohei does and his full you know, package of all of his talents, we're not going to see that in 2024, but it doesn't mean he might not put on a hitting display, the likes of which could earn him the National League's MVP. Yeah, it's going to be really, really interesting to see. I think one important note that you mentioned is the fact that it felt like a lot of Major League Baseball was waiting for this to happen before they just started to started to decide what was going to happen next. Um, where do you kind of see some of these other moves kind of happening? Do you see the Braves making any decisions now that this has kind of been put to bed? Do you think that this was not really involved with what they kind of had going on? I don't necessarily think this was, uh, you know, a distraction from what they were trying to do or, or in terms of, you know, going out and finding, I think, it, maybe a trade for a starting pitcher makes a ton of sense for them. Shohei Otani's free agency, not necessarily something that had to be decided before the Braves could move because Atlanta has been one of the busiest clubs all winter long. I do still think they could use a starting pitcher, somebody who could be slot in at at least the middle, if not the front end of the rotation, if they can find a trade partner with somebody who's especially a controllable starting pitcher that can help them beyond 2024. That I think is still the move for the Braves to make. Uh, there are a few names out there in terms of uh, the Dylan Ceases of the world that the Chicago White Sox might be motivated to move. That's something I can see the Braves being in on. And, of course, with Alex Anthopoulos, as we know, and as we've already seen again this winter, there might just be a name you haven't heard of, hasn't been discussed, we didn't know was available, who all of a sudden becomes an Atlanta Brave in a multiplayer trade. That seems to be how this winter has gone thus far for the Braves, and his track record also would dictate Alex Anthopoulos can find a good trade when he needs for his club. Right, and I think that is just kind of the final question. Uh, there have been some moves here and there that people have questioned. They're wondering, why would you trade all these pieces for this guy that maybe has a higher ERA? I mean... And the question is, what is Alex Anthopoulos cooking? Can you kind of see what the direction is? Is it clear to you or what are you kind of hearing? Uh, the, the biggest thing I think I've seen is that, you know, you want to concentrate on the mission in 2024, but also have an eye on how you create the sustainability of this team and, and signing seven players, uh, your core players to those extensions was a big part of that. But rebuilding your bullpen, making it even stronger, even better than perhaps we've ever seen. That was one option this winter that he wanted to uh, check off on that winter shopping box or one thing that he very much wanted to do. And now I think the same thing can be said for starting pitcher because you have Max Fried coming off a year in which he missed half the season. Charlie Morton's now 40 years old. And you still came into, I think, this winter with questions about who was going to be the fifth man in this rotation. So those are the things that I think Alex Antopoulos can really concentrate on now, finding ways to make this starting rotation the best that it can be. Because, again, I really do feel like they need one more starting pitcher to feel like they've done everything they can this winter in order to get themselves at least to the spring with all the pieces on the board. And hopefully they'll stay healthy throughout the course of the year because no one can predict that. The news cycle never stops in Major League Baseball. This has been a whole lot of fun this winter. Grant McCauley, thank you very much for your time, man. I really appreciate your insight. Of course.